If you know me, then you'll know that I love Japan. More specifically, weird Japanese stuff. You'll also know that I love cars, so when you mash those two things together, I get a real warm fuzzy feeling down in my pants. This is a Suzuki Carry, and it is near enough everything that I love about Japanese cars. It's small, quirky, horrendously impractical for normal life in Britain, and well, it just makes me smile. They come in different shapes with different drivetrains, and they all have different jobs. And to be honest, I don't really know why I've always wanted one, I just kinda have. They cost about seven or eight grand in today's market, and while I could just sell my M140i, buy one and pocket the change, that'd be too easy, wouldn't it? I wonder if 500 quid and a bit of graph could buy one. Well, that's the plan anyway. I've set myself a budget of 500 great British pounds to buy a car, and then I'm gonna try and trade my way up from whatever rust bucket I managed to get hold of to my dream spec Suzuki Carry, which would be a 1986 manual 4x4 pickup, which, you know, I'd eventually like to take off-roading, like the Mighty Car Mod boys. This series is gonna be a bit like Wheeler Dealers, if you bought it off Wish.com, I guess. And it's not gonna make itself, so I need to crack on. Let's get into it. So, there are a few reasons why I want to do this. One, it's a bit of fun. Two, I'd quite like to have a daily driver, instead of me taking the BM to work every day because I must spend like two or three hundred quid a year on cleaning products for the damn thing. And three, well, I priced up a set of winter tyres for the 140, and if I can get a beater car for the same price as a set of Michelin Alpines to get me through the winter, I think that's a pretty good deal. I mean, there's no guarantees that whatever I buy will be any good in the snow, but it'll be ten times better than that one series, I'll tell you that for free. Apart from the £500 budget, I don't really have any other strict requirements. Ideally, I'd like it to have at least six months left on the MOT, just for peace of mind, but it's not a deal breaker if it doesn't, so might as well just start having a look about it. Facebook Marketplace and eBay are going to be the best bets for something like this, I reckon, but I have a feeling that I'm going to be sifting through a lot of spares or repair adverts with a budget as low as mine. Regardless, I jumped onto eBay and, well, my dog jumped onto me, so there's no point using any of that footage now. I'll stick to doing the voiceover stuff. I put my max price down as £650, because I thought that's probably the highest figure that I could barter someone down to 500 from, and away we went. The first result was an S-Class, and it looked exactly how you'd expect a £500 S-Class to look, a little bit tired around the edges. The guy had managed to get his finger in pretty much every photo on the listing, which I have to admit I was pretty impressed by, but the fact it only had one month's test left on it meant it was a no from me. There were another couple of mercs under that, but the pair of them were being sold as spares or repair lots, and this little Fiesta looked really tidy, but it had no MOT. I thought I'd struck gold with this Polo, it had just over 118,000 miles on the clock and 11, yes 11 months test. Even though it looked like a bear had attacked the fuel cap, and it had a little bit of rust on one of the rear arches, it could have been want to stick on the shortlist, but it needs a new clutch. I wish people would just stick that in the title, it'd save me digging through all these bloody listings, it'd be so much quicker and easier. But it wasn't long before another polo showed its face, and this one really, really piqued my interest. Not only did it have the 1.9 TDI PD engine, but it was barely ran in at 300,000 miles, a proper high mileage hero. And aside from a couple of dings and a little bit of rust, it looked quite tidy as well. That's one that's definitely been added to the watch list. I've always liked Lupo's, and even though this one starts at 500 quid on the auction, I doubt it's actually going to sell for that, even if it did have quite a big list of things to sort out on it, so I'm going to have to give that one a miss. And that was about it for eBay. Lots of VAG and other German stuff, the odd Ford, but not much Jap. The only one that stood out was that Polo with 300,000 miles on it, but before I make any inquiries, I jumped over onto Facebook to see what was for sale on there, and the first car must have been owned by someone with IBS, because nothing else can explain why there's just a massive shit stain on the driver's seat. Don't get me wrong, I would love to own a Panda whilst doing this series, especially one of the 4x4 ones, but yeah, this just needs to go in the bin. It doesn't even have any rear seats anymore, man. What the fuck? I've never really been into Vauxhalls, but I have to admit that for 500 Spondulas, this Cavalier probably will be a good project for someone. But that's not what I'm after. I just want something I can jump into when it's ready to go. And there wasn't really that much showing up around my area, to be honest, and the quality of adverts that were, were fucking dreadful. I mean, look at this potato quality photo of a Puma. So I did what all people over the age of 60 do on Facebook, and set my radius to 250 kilometers, knowing fine well that whatever I see, I'm probably not gonna be able to go and view. But I found some right core this Grand Vitara, which was described as rough and ready, definitely was rough, but it looked more ready for a scrapyard rather than anything else. I found a Vectra that looked like that smart car thing on Grand Theft Auto 5 that you can stick a bomb, and a Yaris I quite liked, but again, no MOT. These MGZTs were compared to Audi S4s back in the day. 
I mean, they certainly haven't held the prices as well as them, and I just want to have a little rant before I move on here. Empty the junk out of your car when you're taking pictures of it, especially when you're trying to sell it. Does my head in, man. The last few on Facebook were all out of MOT as well, but I had the number of that high mileage polo saved into my phone, and well, I might have given him a ring. I guess you'll find out in about 15 seconds whether I got it or not, won't you? Cue the over the top reveal montage. You weren't expecting that, were you? A trusty Honda Jazz. I phoned, emailed, and phoned again about that polo and had zero reply. So I dropped a text to an old mate from school, seeing if he'd taken in anything cheap part exchange recently, and he got back to me with this. 450 quid. Unreal, man. It is properly filthy at the moment because I've been using it to go to work in for the last couple of weeks, but apart from a bit of surface rust, it's absolutely spot on. Everything works. I've got electric windows, heated folding mirrors, and a radio. I mean, what else do you want? It's legitimately one of the best cars that I've owned because I don't really have to worry about it. I can park close to a shop now instead of finding a spot half a mile away, and as you can probably tell, I don't mind if it gets dirty. Saying that, I am going to be trying to tidy it up a little bit to sell it on, and that's what the next video in this little series is going to be all about. But while I've got you here, I'll just quickly run over a couple of little things that need addressing before I list it for sale, because I mean, it's 450 quid for a reason. Now, it is as sweet as a nut to drive, the engine sings like every good Honda should, and the gearbox is still as crisp as the day it rolled out with the factory, but the discs are warped a bit. Like, it will try to shake your fillings out when you're slowing down from 70 mile an hour. And I don't know if the two problems are linked, but the ABS light is also on, even though it seems to be working alright. I mentioned the rust, now we'll take a closer look at that once the car's clean, but nothing seems to be structural, it's just making the car look a little bit tatty at the moment. And there are a few other bits like a sticky handle on the rear hatch and some missing plastic on one of the seatbelt buckles, but I'll go full detective mode and see what I can sort out in the next video. Remember, I'm going to be doing this on a tight budget as well, to try and keep the profit margin on this as high as I possibly can, because buying a semi-decent car for really, really cheap is tough, so every penny counts. That's it for now though, hopefully this little jazz is the first of many successful flips, ultimately leading to one of those little Suzuki carries, because your dream car doesn't always have to be a Ferrari. If you want to, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next episode, where I'm going to be attempting to make this thing look like it's just rolled out of the showroom again. And yeah, if you want to win a couple of bottles of doozy car care products, which is what I use to wash my cars at the moment, then drop me a comment down below and I'll announce the winner at the end of the month. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!